9 to 9. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. Nominated for a total of eight National College Radio Awards and the first place winner of three from the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System. The voice of Nassau Community College. This is the award-winning 90.3 WHPC. WHPC HD Garden City. Available on the iHeartRadio app. Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3. WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, I am so happy to have on board as our guest a wonderful physician, Dr. Brooke Goldner. Dr. Goldner graduated with honors from Carnegie Mellon University for her genetic research in leukemia and neurobiology. She received her MD from Temple University School of Medicine and was chief resident at UCLA Harbor Residency in Psychiatry. She also holds a certification in plant-based nutrition from Cornell University. Dr. Goldner was diagnosed with systemic lupus nephritis with stage 4 kidney disease at 16 years old and made a startling recovery from her disease at 28 using her own protocol, which she devised using healthy supermarket foods. She has been symptom-free ever since with normal lab results and no trace of disease. Now, she educates both physicians and private patients on how to heal and achieve vibrant health using her protocol and supermarket foods. Dr. Goldner's hyper-nourishing healing protocol has helped patients with lupus and a multitude of other diseases. Today, we will focus on her book, Goodbye Lucas, Lupus, How a Medical Doctor Healed Herself Naturally. And you can find Dr. Brooke Goldner at veganmedicaldoctor.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Goldner. Well, thank you so much. I love being here. Now, let's go back in time and, and talk about um, why you became a physician in the first place. My dream was always to find a way to help people. That's, I was born to do that. When I was three years old, I used to rescue bugs so people wouldn't step on them. You know, I've always just loved helping people and taking care of them. And when I got sick with lupus at 16, it was really devastating because suddenly, you know, I had chemotherapy for two years trying to save my kidneys and constant medication and really felt terrible all the time. And the thing that got me through it back then was that focus of, you know what, none of us know how much time we have, but I can use my time to make sure that however long I'm on this this planet, I'm making somebody's life better. And so for me, even at 16, what I did was I just decided, I want to be a doctor, I want to save lives the way my doctors are saving mine, and, and I want to help as many people as I can. And so I read my textbooks, you know, when I had chemo, I couldn't go out and party and have friends, you know, do all the stuff other kids did. So whenever I felt okay, I would just read my textbooks forward and backwards, you know, AP chemistry and biology and all that stuff, and really just made that my focus. And I think the intellectual activity made it easier to deal with the emotional impact of it instead of thinking about, you know, the fact that I wasn't living a normal teenage life. I just thought about how cool it was to understand the human body and how amazing it's going to be to get to help all those people when I'm older. And that helped me throughout all the time that I was sick, even in medical school when I had a relapse and I had a mini stroke, what got me through it was, you know what, I'm going to finish medical school, I'm going to be a doctor, and I'm going to save so many lives, I'm going to help so many people, it's all going to be worth it. So that's really, I think, been the driving force that's kept my mindset uh, the way it was, and really it's led me to do the amazing work I do today where I'm not just a doctor, but I actually help people heal, which uh, just made my entire journey and all the pain I ever suffered worthwhile. 
Now, you have a pretty broad base, um, even in terms of your practice, because you obviously are also a psychiatrist. Yes, so I I am a psychiatrist, although I don't practice a lot of psychiatry anymore. Uh, My time is really spent on constantly traveling so i teach at conferences i teach at hospitals uh, i teach you know i'm constantly on the road uh teaching because for me especially having been as sick as i was and healed there's nothing more important to me than making sure everybody who has ears <laughs> can hear my message everyone who has eyes can read it and so i i just actually got back from a month and a half tour Uh, up the west coast and i'm home for two weeks and then we're leaving soon to go all the way up to vermont all the way down to florida and so what i do now is that my entire practice is online so i do have some uh, therapy patients although even for psychiatry it's a holistic approach where we nourish their brains minimize their need for medication um very very important to me that we're using everything we can and not just the pills to help people get better and the majority of the people who i see are actually looking for solutions for chronic illness. So anything from MS to RA, lupus, heart disease, diabetes, they want to talk to a doctor who can help them without medicine and teach them how to eat right so that they can reverse their disease. So that's the majority of what I do. Although I must say that teaching people how to eat is still practicing psychiatry because it's really, you know, food is such an emotional thing, you know, and it's very difficult for people to learn how to change their diet. Uh, But once they do, their lives get so much better, it's easy for them to keep doing it. Well, I'd like to share with our audience, um, Doctor, that you are actually a local girl because we are right now, of course, people are are listening online wherever they are in the world, but we actually broadcast out of Nassau Community College and you were born in Hicksville. Actually, I was born in Brooklyn in Mamadis Hospital, but we moved to Hicksville when I was three years old, and I lived there through uh, through fourth grade. Yeah, absolutely. And then we moved back to New York when I was in middle school in Suffolk County. Right. So, because I'm seeing you have these uh, beautiful family pictures in the back of your book, Goodbye Lupus. Mm-hmm. How a medical doctor healed herself naturally with superfood. And I'd like to remind our listeners that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And my guest today is Dr. Brooke Goldner, medical doctor who has cured herself and has helped thousands of others find their way to better health. And thank you so much for continuing in that work because you sound so excited I saw someone on uh, maybe it was 60 Minutes or one of these shows recently who was a gentleman who was actually born with no arms and no legs I don't know if you ever saw this person Mm -hmm. and he's having a full and complete life I mean he's married and he plays sports and he climbs mountains and he goes swimming you know it's right. just, it was amazing to watch him. It's, it's about that attitude of can do instead of poor me, which you certainly could have just fallen into that. Absolutely. I think the, the man you're talking about is actually a motivational speaker, and nobody can say that their life is more of a struggle than his. So he gets on stage and he owns it. Uh, But absolutely, you know, when I work with people, so I have a rapid healing group online where I, for six weeks, I coach people every single day to make sure they're changing their diet so they can heal. But it's not just diet. A lot of what I need to coach people on is their attitude and their mindset because people don't realize that stress and anxiety are actually inflammatory. You can take a blood test on someone with anxiety and depression and high stress, and it looks like they have an infection. So if you're trying to get rid of inflammatory illness like autoimmune disease, and you're constantly stressed and anxious and worrying and depressed, then it's gonna be really hard for you to recover because your mindset is literally creating inflammation that's fighting the back against your nutrition. So when you can have a really optimistic mindset where you're focused on the good you're doing and on the reasons why you want this to happen for your life and you're in a positive space, you heal so much more rapidly than someone who might have less disease but a really, really bad mindset. Now, why, after all the studying that you've done and and you have this wonderful attitude and and a tremendous amount of medical knowledge, um, you also did genetic research and leukemia and neurobiology of such an amazing background, um, can you share why you think you got lupus? So, 
Lupus is an autoimmune disease where your immune system suddenly stops recognizing your own organs and starts attacking them like they're a disease, right? So for me, it started with kidneys, and then it moved on to creating blood clots. And so it's a very strange thing where someone can live like I did for 16 years with an immune system that works, and then suddenly, nope, don't know what you are. Is that a kidney? No, let's kill it, right? So it's a very strange thing. And But really, that's how all diseases develop, right? Somebody is relatively healthy or at least unsymptomatic until suddenly they're diagnosed with a disease. But it's not really sudden. What happens is we all have genes that dictate what illnesses we will get if we get sick. So for me, it's autoimmune disease. For somebody else, it'll be diabetes or the number one killer in our country, heart disease or cancer. Those are our genetics. Those determine what illnesses we get if we get sick. But what actually determines if we get sick is how we eat, our lifestyle. So we literally are what we eat. Our cells are made of the nutrients we consume into our body. And so when people eat what I call recreational eating, where they're eating just to have fun, to get high, "Mm, pizza sounds good, I'm going to feel great, you know, I'm going to get a rush out of that, right? When people are eating that way all the time, or most of the time, then their cells are literally built out of the wrong foods, and their body will at some point develop so much chronic inflammation, it will trigger their disease, their genes for illness. So, and everybody's sensitivity is different. So for me, eating the same junk food my friends ate, Doritos and macaroni and cheese and all that, by 16, my kidneys were failing and they gave me six months to live unless I did chemotherapy, right? Now, those same friends that didn't get chemo or didn't get lupus at 16 like I did, they now all have high blood pressure or they've had some kind of cancer scare or something else because we're in our 40s now, right? So I think that's the thing is people think that diseases are different because they got them at different ages or they have different symptoms. But really, those genetics don't have to get expressed at all if we all learn to eat the right way. And that's why those diseases are often reversible as well. That's very true. And certainly, the more scientific investigation we do, the more we know that's true. For instance, foods like cabbage and broccoli and other foods in the brassica family have silencers that turn off things like oncogenes, even if you were born with them. So that's so amazing that you could positively influence a genetic problem. Absolutely, and it's and so powerful. It makes all of us realize that we are not a slave to our genes. In fact, nutrition scientists now think we probably only have, our genes are probably only 5 to 10% of whether or not we get sick at all. And so when you realize the power of that, that's why I'm so excited all the time. <laughs> Everyone always tells me I'm, I'm always excited and passionate. But for me, this is, this is so exciting. You know, I studied genetics, and I did all the research, and I've done all that Nothing has been as powerful to me as teaching people how to eat in terms of helping them actually reverse diseases and get their lives back. It is the most amazing and yet simple thing there is, and yet it has so much power. And what do you think is a first step? Let's say uh, I think the best time to start on a program like yours and to even look at your book, Goodbye Lupus, How a Medical Doctor Healed Herself Naturally with Supermarket Foods, is really when you're well rather than waiting until you get a severe diagnosis. Absolutely. You know, the problem is most people, if they're feeling okay, they don't want to make big changes, right? So when people come to me, it's always dire. It's always, you know, their organs are failing. They've, you know, I had one person who literally she had 15%, no, 14% kidney function and that was on the transplant list in 20 something year old. And her doctor said, nutrition will have no effect. You're getting a kidney transplant. And she goes, great. I have nothing to lose. Right. And six weeks later, she had 27% kidney function, no longer needs a transplant, only from changing her diet, right? So most of the people I see are like that. They're already desperate. That's just an amazing story. We're going to take a little break here, Dr. Brooke, and we'll be coming back. So I want to tell our listeners that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live or online at ncc.edu backslash WHPC. For more information on today's guest or topic, Email whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it. You hear it every time you finish a meal and never feel anything. 
But if we were able to associate this sound with a new stimulus... Save the food. We've achieved pulling a natural response from you. Save the food. Why are we doing this, you may ask?